hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to automatically autofill sms otps from your sms in expo react native for android using the sms consent api so first i'll uh, set up the project and then i'll explain it to you what exactly i'm trying to do so basically like uh, a user will enter a phone number he will click on a button uh, then it will basically call our backend api our backend api will call some sms service it will send the otp to the user and once the otp message has been received we will automatically fetch the otp from our message and fill it inside our text input now i will not be creating a backend i will be using a service called twilio and i will manually send an otp so it will send an actual otp to uh, the phone number which i have uh, to my actual phone number so i have hard coded my phone number on twilio side but uh, you don't have to use twilio you can use any sms service you want to as i think aws provides it maybe google cloud also provides it use whatever you feel like uh, anyways you will get more more idea on uh, once i show you the actual project uh, let's get started first with creating the project because that takes a lot of time now i am using this blank typescript template so if you just go to this particular url there are different templates for creating expo project i am using this a uh, blank typescript template because that has that provides a minimum boilerplate code if you are if you are curious you can use any of this uh, template whichever uh, you feel is the right one for you so i'll just copy this command so it will create a blank typescript project for me inside my terminal you can cd to your workspace wherever you feel like uh, now it will ask me for some name uh, let's just wait okay i'll just give it as my app i'll click on enter now it will create the project for us so yeah uh, this will take little bit of time so what i'll do is i'll just open my app over here also if you see i have created another project called first so i will be copying a lot of code from this practice project so don't get confused if i copy if i open some i will be opening some file from this first project but anyways uh yeah just a heads up now if you see uh it hasn't created the android folder for us also this is only for android specific expo react native uh, there is one more a api in expo react native uh, android sorry for android called sms retriever api we are using the user consent api so if you want a video for sms retriever as well do let me know in the comments and i haven't checked for ios i'm not sure if ios allows it or not uh, but yeah if you are curious for ios do let me know in the comments i'll check how to do that for ios as well so anyways uh, here you can see we need to write a native module and given that uh, we need to create an android folder inside of our project we don't have an android folder over here so for that let's see what's the next step is so again here is my cheat sheet so to create the android folder we will have to go to this particular url so i'll just copy it and i show it to you in the browser itself uh, so here you can see we'll have to select android here i have select development build don't select expo go because that is only for prototyping select development build here i have disabled ees because i want to build it uh, locally i'm on mac os but if you are on windows or linux choose appropriate os i have uh, already done all this setup of installing watchman this cas and this android studio i have already done it but if you haven't done it you will have to do it for the very first time uh, once you are done with all the setup then we'll have to run this particular command so i'll just copy this uh, then again i will uh, cd to my project so my project initialization is done i've cd to my project i'll just clear this out and i will run this particular command now this will not create the android folder for us this will only create the export dev client for us okay again this will take little bit of time so be patient again i'll scroll down once that command has finished we'll have to copy this particular command this will actually create the android folder for us so here you can see this command is finished now i will run uh, this particular command so this will first ask me for my package name you can change it to whatever you feel like i'll just keep it default and click on enter but typically your package name should be com dot your company name dot your app name now this will create the android folder for us so if i show you my project here you can see it has created android folder for us now again this will take little bit of time because it has to do gradle syncing and all that stuff so yeah uh, ignore that uh, next <coughs> uh, we have to go to this particular uh, url which will help us to create uh, tell us how to create a native module so i'll just open it over here uh, so here you can see that my previous command has shown thrown this error the reason is because i don't have an android emulator installed don't test this on android emulator test it on a real device 
also i haven't connected my real device via usb on my laptop that's why it has thrown me error because it was trying to uh, run my uh, run this application on a device or on a simulator on emulator sorry but it couldn't find anyone because we i will be running it very later i don't want to run it now so this is fine okay then uh, this is the command for adding a new module to our existing application so i'll just copy it and i'll paste it over here and uh, we don't have to do this step because we are not doing it for ios so we can just ignore this step again here it will ask we ask us for our module name i'll just keep everything as default i'll just click enter 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 and then it will create the module for us now uh, coming back to our documentation like i told you we will be using the user consent api so i will uh, click on this one tap sms verification so this is how the flow should be so once the user has entered the mobile number he will click on a button it will call a api our backend service our backend service will call the uh, otp service okay and once the user receives an otp uh, he will see something like this allow zomat like allow your app name to read the message below so as soon as whatever message we get uh, we will uh, our app will show this particular pop up and then it's up to the user to allow or deny it if the user clicks on allow we will get the entire message content okay so uh, we 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 just won't get the otp we'll get the entire message content now it's up to us to filter out the otp from the entire message content and fill it inside the uh, text box so i will show you that later okay but this is how the flow is uh, now if you want to read the documentation you can go through this as well uh, but anyways like i told you i have already created sample project which i will be copying from so first i'll open app.tsx i will go to my sample project and here i will open app.tsx as well so i will firstly i will copy all this these two imports and i'll paste it over here i will explain it to you first let me copy all the code then i need this as well paste it and here i need this thing okay i need to import touchable opacity from react native so i'll add this as well okay so what basically i am doing is that here i will create a method called register you can name it whatever you feel like uh, on the native module side i haven't created it that's why it is throwing me an error and we will here we will keep listening for uh, sms message so so actually here we will keep listening for otp uh, the listening of sms will be done on the native module side so once the native module has detected the otp we will send it back to react native side so we will get the otp over here so as you can see i'm just setting it in this particular variable here i have one button treat this button as uh, once the user enters a mobile number and clicks on a button called get otp button right so treat this button as a get otp button so here if you see inside this register uh, function i won't be calling a backend api because i don't have a backend api right i will be manual once i click on this register button i will be just uh, listening for sms then i will manually go to twilio which is the sms uh, service which i am using to send real messages or otp messages to my mobile number it will be a real message uh, and then it will our device will automatically detect the message and it will uh, pick the otp and send it back to react native side and here you can see i am just displaying this inside a text input sorry a text uh, like text react native component but you can use a text input as well because we are setting it over here right uh, so uh, that's why i have kept the ui pretty simple uh, but mostly in your case it would be a mobile number then a button so this is that button and once uh, the otp get you can fill it inside this particular text input if you have it okay now uh, we'll have to create firstly this register uh, method right so i'll go to my practice project modules my modules uh, i'll go over to index.ts okay so we just have to copy this particular method so what i will do is in my real project modules uh, index.ts and i will just uh, paste it over here okay so here uh, we are exporting this now our app.tsx is happy so no more error but we will have to define this uh, register method on our native module side as well so first go to android go to build.gradle because we have to add few dependencies so i'll go to my practice project build.gradle i will open it 
now i have copied all this code from documentation so don't worry too much about it even i don't understand the entire code uh, exactly so firstly we have to add this dependency uh, be careful with this dependency version like whatever is the latest version at the time of you watching this video use that at the time of me making these are this uh, latest version so use whatever is the latest version so make sure you add this to then go to src we have to go to java and we have to go to my module.kt i'll uh, close all the other files because we don't need those now i'll go to my practice project src main java expo modules my modules my module.kt as well okay and i will open it uh, i will just open this in uh, right hand side okay so that i can copy some imports so firstly we'll have to copy all these imports i'll just make this a little bit more bigger <clears throat> okay i'll copy all these imports over here uh, okay so that's the first thing uh, let's see what's the next next is we have to get hold of our context as well as our activity so i'll just copy this particular code and here i will add enter i'll paste it over here you can uh, make the indentation a little bit more proper i'll leave that up to you then we have to make use of this broadcast receiver so i'll just copy this code and even i don't understand it, it uh, exactly but i'll try to explain it as much as i can so again i'll just move this i'll scroll up so here is our broadcast receiver so once we receive an sms we try to get some extras out of it and if you are using android t or above you will have to use something like this and both below android t we have to use like this then we get the retriever status then we check if the retriever status is success if yes again for android t we have we get the intent something like this but for older uh, versions of android we get it like this and here we st uh, use start activity for result now i know some of you might be wondering start activity for result is deprecated but uh, we can't like we can use register for activity result like i have tried to check few other expo models how they use it but it is extremely complicated like typically you sh uh, register for activity result is designed to work directly with activity or a fragment but we are neither in a fragment nor in an activity that's why we can't use it this still works but it is deprecated i don't know how to fix this uh, if you know how to use register for activity result in a simpler way in an expo model do let me know in the comments so that it will be helpful for others as well and in case of error i'm just displaying toast message so here there is one timeout as well so once you start listening for messages uh, that doesn't mean you will continuously listening continuously listen for messages like the android os will stop uh, your app from listening from messages after some certain amount of time you can check that time uh, what exactly is that time in the documentation but uh, yeah here i am showing this timeout error as a toast message but you can handle it in a better way uh, next again i'll just go back to my practice project and firstly we'll have to uh, use this particular two methods to uh, register and unregister our broadcast receiver so again i'll scroll down just make this little bit more bigger okay and i'll paste it so once our activity comes in uh, foreground we register our receiver if it goes in background we unregister our receiver uh, okay then again i'll scroll down scroll down so this is all boilerplate code so here we have we are creating this async function of register so use the same name whatever you have defined otherwise it will otherwise it won't work for you so i'll just scroll down and here after our view i will enter this particular code so here once our button clicks we are basically calling this particular thing now here you don't need this success listener failure listener these are just part of my debugging i'm not really doing anything in it also this i have passed it as null because i don't know uh, what uh, mobile number twilio is using to send otp to my mobile number okay this is not the user's mobile number this is the mobile number which is twilio or any other uh, service which you are using for sending sms otp so it's better you pass this as null okay then uh, here comes the on activity result so i'll just copy that as well and i'll just paste it over here so i'll just now close this so here if you see we are checking the request code as 10 because here while starting the intent we were passing the request code as 10 you can take a constant for that as well and if the result is okay then here we get the entire message which we receive from our message service now uh, 
my message service has this sample code this uh, like whenever i receive a message from twilio the message is something like this your sample text verification code is whatever is my otp so the only the otp part changes rest every rest the entire message remains the same so that's why i'm using this substring to uh, remove my verification code from this entire message so that's what i'm doing over here and once i have that i am just using this on change to uh, change to send the verification code back to react native side now this on change send event is already defined once we create a module so here you can see here also they are using this export export team so i don't have to create my own uh, change event but if you are curious you can go to the src and here you can see the uh, here you can see uh, this is the type for it and also inside index index.ts they have defined somewhere over here yeah so i don't want to touch this uh, because yeah uh, so i think that should be it now what i'll do is that i'll quickly run this application on a real device and show you guys the output i just want to show you guys the code once more in case if you guys got confused so i'll simply scroll through this and if you want you can just pause the video wherever you feel like okay guys so as you can see this is my output now treat this authenticate button as sign kind of like get otp button okay so i'll just click on it and here you can see it has start listening for uh, messages so i have uh, so we are getting this toast message i don't know why i'm getting this promise rejection uh, but now what i will do is i'll go to twilio see the output is blurred my twilio dashboard is blurred because i don't want to show you guys my mobile number uh, so i'll just uh, send an otp code from twilio to my mobile number i will go back to my app so it has sent me that otp and so here you can see i have received uh, the message okay so i'm trying to mirror my device that's why it is taking a little bit of time so here you can see it has uh, detected it if i click on allow here you can see i'm able to get my uh, otp as well now i'm trying to mirror my device that's why it is a little laggy but in a uh, on your side if you test it on a real device it will work properly also if you see my message here you can see uh, inside the message itself you are seeing this your sample text verification code is that's why i have added this hard coded uh, this hard coded string in my code because i know what my uh, text message would be like uh, but i like for most otp uh, based messages the text is the same only the otp things changes so you can you will have to ch uh, change this uh, change uh, this particular part according to whatever is your otp message so yeah that's it thank you for watching bye